Hello and welcome back to another video in the world of Monster Hunter. Today is all about the spread heavy bowgun build progression. Now, once again, I wish to state that these are just the builds I use as I progress because I'm a sad and saved all of them. So they might not necessarily be the best builds out there, but it's just the way I've gone with it. And I do hope that they help people along the way considering Iceborne is coming out. I'm expecting a lot of new players. So I just generally hope that this is of use. And I've got a lot to get through, so we're going to head straight into it. Now for the first build, I'm going to be using the Gluttonous Fang Cannon. This is pre-Elder Dragons, by the way. So the best spread heavy bowgun at that point would be the one from Great Jagras. We're using the Kulu Yaku Headpiece, simply because it gives weakness exploit. Rathalos Male Beta, simply because weakness exploit level 2. Zora Claws Beta for the free element. Odegaran Coil Beta for the critical eye. And then Larvisioth Greaves Beta for the spread slash power shot up. We are also using the Awakening Charm. I don't remember whether it be level 1 or level 2, but it's a good point to work on this. If not, definitely the attack, as that's basically going to be your main point of call either attack or awakening. Now, depending on your luck with decorations, you could potentially use the Rathalos Helm Beta, which will give you attack boost level 3 rather than just the one attack boost, simply because you have a tenderizer decoration, or you could swap out the Rathalos Helm Beta for the Wrath Soul Helm, which offers crit boost rather than attack boost. Initial damage wise, they're pretty much the exact same. The Rathalos Helm Beta will offer more higher damage on a more consistent basis. However, you can hit a fair bit harder using this build simply because it has critical boost. Now, this next build is sort of the intermission period between, well, four farming Nergagante. So you've killed Nergagante, you haven't really been able to make anything yet. But this build should offer you a higher capability of farming him. And that is, quite simply, Dragon King Eye Patch Alpha, Doba Male Beta, Zora Claws Beta, Odegaran Coil Beta, and you're going to be needing a Tenderizer Gem, although at this point you should roughly have one. I know people that haven't though, if so, it's totally up to you how you want to go with it. Levisioth Greaves Beta, and yet again, an Awakening Charm. Now, this is the point where you actually quickly realize in order to actually have a successful spread heavy bowgun build, you kind of need to be really, really lucky with decorations. So at this point, I'd be farming normal Nogagante through investigations as well as tier 2 tempered. They're your HR 30 plus ones. And hopefully you can come up with something a bit like this, gluttonous fan cannon with an attack decoration, Nogagante helm alpha. Doba Male Beta with a release decoration, Kaiser Van Braces Beta with a spread. And from here you have the Odegaran Coil again, feel free to do what you want with, and the Dante's Leather Boots Alpha, which are from Code Red Event Quest. And finally, the Awakening Charm Level 3. You might have noticed that our damage has jumped up a fair bit. Now the next build is the exact same, it is quite simply just changing out weapons from the Gluttonous Fan Cannon to the Destruction Fusillade. This is the Nergagante Heavy Bowgun. I've also added in a Mighty Decoration and two Expert Jewels, this puts you at 100% affinity, don't feel that you need to do that, it's just, you know, something that has been quite handy. Now the reason that the Destruction Fusillade is sought after is quite simply it is the highest damaging heavy bow gun that is able to utilize correctly through recoil and reload spread three ammo you will need ammo up level three for this because otherwise it only has three shots before you have to reload this is at the start of the end game the most damaging spread build there is if you're lucky you need your augments congrats i would go with damage and affinity and potentially remove that maximum might for a critical jewel if you have it from here we basically now start to seriously and i do mean seriously jump up 
you're going to be farming a lot more consistently, a lot more effectively, and doing things in a relatively decent-ish time, as you're going to be hitting a lot harder. I will confess that I actually stuck with Gluttonous Fan Cannon throughout, because that can hit a magazine of 6 or 8, one of the two. And although it is a spread 2 heavy bow gun, I just found the increase in magazine much more useful, rather than having to do 4 shots and then reload. However, because all people seem to care about is Max Deeps, this is the build that I used to run for my Tariff Assault Glutton. I have just mixed it around a little bit to have the Destruction Fusillade in play. So Destruction Fusillade with an Affinity Augment and an Expert Decoration called to a Fury Beta with a Tenderizer and an Expert, Draken Mal Alpha with a Spread, Draken Van Braces Alpha with two Tenderizers, Nogagante Coil Beta with a Critical and Draken Greaves Alpha with a Mighty and again we, you can see we are using the Awakening Charm. This is for all intensive purposes one of the most damaging heavy bowgun builds at the moment. Even the current end game heavy bowgun build is a little bit behind this. Not by much, just ever so slightly, but where it makes up for it is it has the razor sharp spare shot skill which does eventually allow for a higher damage output. The general gist is the less time you spend reloading, the more time you spend doing damage. Having spare shot basically means you're able to continue continue your firing without having to reload, ergo more damage. Now the next build is pretty much the exact same, there's just been a few amendments put in place to allow for Tariff Assault Glutton, which to date, pre-Iceborne, is the best spread heavy bowgun in the game. And a lot of people would argue that it is just quite simply the best heavy bow gun flat out so without further ado let's have a look at what is shot for shot the most powerful build there is tariff assault glutton with an affinity and a health augment Kulv taroff fury with tenderizer and an expert draken mount alpha with a spread draken van braces alpha with two tenderizer no Gigante coil beta with a critical and then draken greaves alpha with elementless this is the only heavy bogan in the game that is actually able to utilize elementless we also have the awakening charm three this gives you eight shots per clip on your spread three ammo which is what makes this thing so damn powerful you might also notice i have left the Heavy Bowgun mod customization thing at none, none, and none. You are free to here to do what you want. I do recommend using reload and too close, or reload close and shield if you are still learning Heavy Bowgun, or are up against a monster that you particularly struggle with. But as it stands, this is shot for shot, the most powerful Heavy Bowgun spread build there is. The next build actually drops your EFR ever so slightly, but where it makes up for it, like I said previously, is the use of the spare shot skill. It is absolutely devastating on that effect, simply because, again, where you're not reloading, you are doing more damage. It is the build that I have used throughout this entire game, minus one amendment, just because I'm a little noob and I find it just ever so slightly handy to have, particularly when you're fighting things that do a fair amount of tick damage, such as Valhazak, Teostra, Lunastra, and the likes of really, really annoying monsters with bullshit mechanics. So, without further ado, the final build is... Tariff Assault Glutton with an Affinity Augment which is a definite. You can use a Damage Augment if you so wish. I personally use a Health because although the Health Augment only takes effect from one of the pellets, not the overall shot, the Health Return for me is just enough to keep me going throughout the fight because I am not the best player. That's why I make these videos. There are lots of pro videos out there but if you're still a little bit of a filthy casual like moi then perhaps my build will help you a bit more. Xenogiva Headgear Gamma. 
that's arch tempered Xeno Jiva for those that don't know. Tenderizer Jewel 2, attack, attack. Dracon Male Alpha with a spread. Dracon Vambraces Alpha with two Tenderizer. Xeno Jiva Spine Gamma with a release and an attack. Xeno Jiva Spurs Gamma with Elementless Expert Expert. And finally, an Awakening Charm. Two. As you can see, even though I have the damage augment on this, I am roughly 10 points of effective raw behind the previous build. How this will translate in game will be one damage per pellet per shot. So effectively, you are missing out on seven damage per shot, which is negligible at best. However, provided well, not even provided, if you're lucky enough and you get at least one spare shot per magazine, you will do so, so much more damage that it is absolutely a joke as to how much this thing can kick out. It's almost to a point of where everyone's now a speedrunner. I would personally argue that this is the highest DPS build in the game even including a lot of the bows simply because of well just the stationary aspect of it in order to utilize a bow effectively you're having to dodge forward back left right etc etc but with spread due to the fact that it just hits so damn hard and consistently you, you can literally just sit in the monster's face or a weak point area and just spam those shots to do a stupid stupid amount of damage anyway that is me if you've liked this video well leave a like if you want more of my content or finding me remotely entertaining feel free to click the subscribe button it is free it really does help me out but in the meantime good luck have fun and don't die it's really bad for the health <laughs>